Alright guys, welcome to another painting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be painting Lauka Vi, the Mother of Nightmares, from the new Soul Blight Grave Lord release. Um, I'll probably refer to her as Laura in this uh, video, that's what I've been calling her. That's really her name, if you just change the K to an R, it's Laura. So, that's what I'll be calling her. Uh, we'll be going through the whole process on this lady today. Centaur lady. Uh, including the base and everything. So, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the hardest part of the whole thing. Uh, that's going to be to do a little bit of wet blending with some contrast paint. So, I'm going to be using Black Templar and Skeleton Horde for this. So, I'm going to get them both open. And I've got my water handy because I'll be needing to rinse my brush pretty consistently here. So, I just pop these both open. And so, what I'm trying to do is get a get the black fading starting up here and then fading out onto the wings that's what we're gonna try so I need my water handy like I said I've got my paper towel to dry my brush off and we're just gonna get to it I'm using the new Citadel synthetic brushes by the way um, they work they're working great so far I've used them for about five hours so far and they've been going going just fine so I'm just gonna start here out at the tops or the tips of the wings and uh, the great thing about wet blending with contrast paint is that it stays wet for a lot longer obviously you can thin down regular paint and wet blend with it just fine but um, with contrast paint you don't have to worry about thinning it you just paint it on and it'll stay there for quite a while so I'm gonna do this one spike at a time basically um, and I'll show you the first spike, maybe I'll show you the second spike as well, and then we'll come back after I do the rest, and uh, we'll go on to the next step. But one or two of these, and you should get the gist, no problem. So there, I've got my black on there, so I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm going to go into my skeleton hoard here, and I'm going to get a good puddle of this up here, and then I'm just going to drag them together, like just like that. And then rinse my brush. And then get some more skeleton hoard. And just drag them over into the rest of the wing here. Bring a little bit of skeleton hoard in like that. And this just kind of takes practice. You'll, uh, you'll start to get the hang of it after a while. I'm just going to go up and paint in up here. Um, basically, when you're doing it like this, where I'm going to do one spike and then another spike and so on and so forth, I just want to paint up to natural barriers, so like this crack here, um, or this line, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this contrast paint to dry before I do my next wet blend, and so if you leave contrast paint to dry and then try to paint over it, you'll have a line through it, um, and you don't want that, obviously. So, but if you paint up to natural barriers, like that, for instance, then you won't have those lines because they'll be in the natural barriers. And then on the back here, um, I'm just going to do the same thing. It's not as crucial on the back because, as you can see in there, it's very hard to see what's really going on in there, so it's not a huge deal. Um, the front is much more important, so I'm just going to roughly blend that out. But there you go. As you can see, we've got our black fading out here. I'm just going to add a little bit more black here to bring it out a little farther. There we go. That's better. You basically don't want your you want your color transition to exist somewhere where there isn't already a transition. So for instance, right here is a there's a knuckle right here. That already is a transition in body parts. So you want your transition your fade to be farther out from that so that it actually looks like you did something. <laughs> That's what we're going for here. You want to be able to tell that you did some some wet blending. And it's really just mixing it until you uh, until you're comfortable and until you think you've got the blend you're looking for and I think I'm there now. Obviously when I do this one actually I'll just do that one. I'll just do this one right now on, uh, on camera right here. And uh, and then we'll stop, and I'll do the rest off camera, so you don't have to see the same thing over and over. But So we're just going to get 
a bunch of contrast paint, probably up to about that knuckle. That looks good. And on the back as well. Make sure we get all sides here. And then again, rinse the brush off really well. And then come back with Skeleton Horde. Get a good puddle and just start mixing it in here. Get some more. Start up here. Bring it on down here. A little bit more black. I just want the transition to be nice and smooth. So a little bit more black here. There we go. And that that's what we're looking for, right there. So we'll carry on and do this across the rest of the wings, these two spikes and then all the spikes over there. And as soon as that's done, we'll come back and move on. All right, so we're back with our blends all finished up on the wings there. And we just did the rest of the dragon skin or whatever this thing is. Just did the rest of the skin with the skeleton horde. Um, if you're doing these blends, you just kind of keep working them back and forth. Your contrast paint will stay wet for quite a while. So you just keep working them, work the colors back and forth until you're happy with it, really. Not much to it. It does take some practice, but because it's the, the paint stays wet for so long, you can get a lot of practice in on a single model, just going back and forth and back and forth. And if you make a mistake that it is seems unfixable, you can just get a bunch of water and clear out that area with water, and you'll be all set. So we're going to move on to the fur now of the bottom half here. And we're going to do that in Agaros Dunes. This is like Skeleton Horde, but just a little bit darker. So it's a good color for this hair. And we're just going to make sure to not overlap the skin too much. But if we overlap the skin a little bit, it's not a problem because it'll help blend the fur into the skin. So we've got fur here on each leg or each ankle, I guess. And then we've also got fur here on the back of each thigh. So we're just going to make sure to make sure this is good and covered. Make sure it's pretty dark because we want it to be differentiated from the skin, even though we're using a similar color. And then just check around, make sure we got all the patches. I think there's only these four, but we'll double check to confirm. So I'll, uh, I'll finish that up and we'll come back for the next step. All right, so we're back. Fur is all set and ready to go. So now we're gonna move on to the upper half of this centaur dragon Laura lady. And for that, we're going to go with Stormhost Silver and we're gonna base coat all the armor in this color. Um, we're gonna end up with a metallic purple color for the armor, but to make sure that that has some good sheen on it, we're gonna base coat it with this first. So everything that we use up here, most likely is going to be layer paint, so I don't have to worry about conserving the primer for any more contrast. Uh, the only thing I want to make sure of is to not get any on the skin that we've already painted. So I'm just going to base coat in all this stuff. I'll probably do the weapons as well. Um, the only thing I don't need to worry about is the chainmail. I know that's going to be a different color, so I'm not super concerned with with it getting silver underneath it. And silver underneath gold, which is what the chainmail is going to be, can sometimes make the gold look a little bit flat. I don't want that, so I'm just going to avoid the chainmail as much as possible. If a couple little slaps get on there, not a big deal, but we just don't want to fully paint over it, basically. Get these little side bits here. So yeah, I'll just... Uh, carry on doing this 
on all the armor. I might even give it a second coat. I'll let you know if I do when I come back. And uh, yeah, we'll come back and do the next step. Alright, so we're done with that Stormhost Silver. Got that all base coated. I end up only doing one coat. Um, we'll probably do two of the purple on here. But just the one of the silver. So let's continue. And for that, I'm going to go to the Fang. There we go. And we're just going to base in all the cloth with this color. Um, we're going to end up painting it a different color. But the color we're going to use on it is slightly transparent. And so putting the Fang underneath it will give us this nice rich blue color to uh, have as a base coat. So we're just going to do this on all the cloth. That includes the little borders around the chainmail here. We'll obviously have some spillover onto the actual chainmail, but that's okay. Just want to make sure to not get any on the metal that we've already painted. And, of course, on the skin. So, I'm just going to do that. And then we have the edges of the chainmail up here. We want to make sure to get the back of that as well. So, we'll do that. The edges of these chainmail pieces. And that'll be it for that color. So, I'll just finish applying this color. Wait for that to dry. And we'll come back and do the next step. Alright, so our silver is all dry. Or rather, our blue, rather. That's the last step we did. Our blue is all dry. So now we're going to move on to the next color, which is going to be this. It's called Pearl Plum from Createx Airbrush Colors. Um, and it's a metallic purple. And we're just going to put this all over the silver. Um, we'll probably need two coats, but we'll see. Um... I'm putting this on fairly thick because it's a, as you saw, it's meant for airbrushes. So it's quite thin already. So I'm putting it on thick, almost like contrast paint, to be honest. Um, it's a little bit thicker than contrast paint. It's not a liquid. Well, not a, not an incredibly viscous liquid anyway. Um, so it's not like a wash, I guess I'll say. Um, but I'm still putting it on fairly thick and it'll settle down into recesses and runoff edges and stuff. So I'm going to put one coat on, see what that looks like, let that dry, and then see what the second coat looks like. So I'm going to keep the camera on though this whole time, just so you can see what this stuff looks like going on. And what it looks like as it starts to dry and what it looks like next to the other colors we've got on here. Granted, this blue is not our final blue, but nonetheless. When I was doing this test model for this color scheme, I was using one of the, uh, one of the skeletons from Cursed City, and a friend of mine remarked that uh, the fang and this purple make this model look like Skeletor. Granted, this model doesn't have skeleton face like that skeleton did but the colors are there and now I cannot even see that color combination so that's ultimately what prompted me to change the uh, the blue color in fact it was originally going to be the fang but then I don't really want my soul blight grave lords looking like Skeletor so you know I mean Skeletor is cool I painted a Skeletor not too long ago, <laughs> but uh, I don't want I don't want my army full of Skeletors. So we changed the blue we're gonna use, and I think the the new blue looks even better to be honest. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just gonna make sure to get all of this silver covered up. And remember, we're doing the chainmail in gold, so we don't need to do anything there. But everything else on her is going to be this color. And the sword will also be a different color. It will be for all the weapons of this army. I'm using a darker silver, so we'll come back to that at some point.
And just from looking at it from here, I think we're gonna end up needing a second coat of this. But we'll see, I'm gonna let this dry. As soon as I finish this here, I'll let this dry really, really well. Like, I'm not gonna touch it for a while. Um, and then we'll come back to it, see how it looks on there, see if we need a second coat or not. And honestly, we might even paint in some of the other colors first before we decide if we need a second color. We'll see. It will depend. Missed the spot right back here. There we go. And then all this. I don't know what this thing is called, this decorative neck guard she's got here, but I'm going to make sure we get the purple all the way down in there. And then we just got some more purple or some more silver up here near her face. These teeth on the end of this thing are going to be bone colored in the end, so we don't have to worry too much about that. I think we're good. I think we have coverage there. So yeah, we'll uh, let this dry really, really well, not touch it for probably at least 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and see if we need to do a second coat. Alright, so we're all set. Our purple is all nice and dry. We did end up giving it a second coat, but uh, then we let that completely dry, and now we're going to move on. So I'm going to go on to Fenrisian Gray now, and this is going to be the color of our robes that we're going to put over the fang. This is, uh, there's honestly not that many steps left on her. Um, a lot of the steps that are coming up are pretty small parts of her so we've got maybe 10 or 12 more steps on her um, before the base the base will take a little bit longer but honestly because her bottom half is an animal that has just skin essentially skin and fur uh, she's actually quite a quick paint job for being such a large model and granted you could go crazy on on the skin of the animal and uh, make it a super complicated paint job and there'd be nothing wrong with that at all. But for me, I'm happy to just paint the skin as a color of skin and move on. So I'm quite happy with, uh, with the speed at which this paint job is progressing. So like I said, I'm just painting over all the parts that we based in the fang earlier. And this is one of those times where I'm sure people will say, well, why even bother doing the fang? You're just covering it up completely. Um, if you paint Fenrisian Grey over Wraithbone, you will, and then paint Fenrisian Grey over the fang, put them side by side, and you will notice a huge difference. The, uh, the Fenrisian Grey really needs a nice, rich blue undercoat to it in order to be a nice color. Um, with just Wraithbone under it or a light colored primer it really doesn't look good it looks really flat um, it just it looks more like Fenrisian Grey than Fenrisian Blue which is really what this comes out looking like even though it is called Fenrisian Grey but we don't worry about that so that's all done um, we can just immediately go right into the next step and that's going to be to just base coat our hair and for that I'm just going to use Black Templar Easy peasy. We just want to be careful not to get too much of this on her skin because while we're not going to use contrast on her skin, at least I don't think, I haven't really thought about it yet, I don't think we're going to use contrast on her skin. Um, even if we end up using layer paint, this dark color will still be an annoying thing to cover over with layer paint, so we want to avoid getting as much on there as we can won't make our job impossible. Like, if we got Black Templar on her skin and we were then trying to use contrast paint, well, it would be impossible to cover that up. There's not a darker contrast color than this Black Templar, so. But with 
layer paint, we can cover it up, but we may as well make our job as easy as possible. So, just kind of trying to spin the model here to get the best angle at getting at her hair. And trying not to hit anything else that we have already painted. Just a little bit there. Right there. I think we're good. I think I've gotten all the strands of hair. Yep. Alright, so we'll let all that dry. We'll come back and I think we'll do the gold. Alright guys, everything is all dry and ready to go. So now we're going to come in with Retributor Armor. And we're going to paint all the chainmail as well as the uh, the bat... I was going to say the bat symbol. No. The bat face on her... Uh, on her shoulder there. And uh, possibly this bat on the front of her armor here. I'm not sure. We're going to paint in what we know is going to be gold first. And then we'll go back and see kind of how that gold is balancing everything out. And if not enough gold in a couple places, then we'll put some more. Making sure to get this chainmail back here. Um, and I'm going to keep the camera going for this whole color just so that we can all look at the, the balance of the gold and I'll talk through whether I'm going to add some more gold and what made that decision for me and so on and so forth. So here we go. Still using this. Uh, I've just been using the um, medium layer brush from the new Citadel synthetic brushes, and uh, been going great so far. Um, as has been pointed out, it's kind of odd to call them synthetic brushes because, like, it's odd to call out the fact that they're synthetic since all their previous brushes have also been synthetic. Uh, possibly with the exception of the Artificer brush. I'm not sure if that was actually natural hair or not but um regardless of that it's working great so that's all i'm really interested in so there's all oh, no i gotta get the back of these chainmail pieces here and when i gotta get her sword also her sword hilt anyway just get this other piece of chainmail here good all right, and then, like I said, I'm going to get the sword here. The blade will be a different color that we'll do later, but all of this is going to be gold because I imagine she's quite a fancy vampire and would have a gold handle on her sword, or at least a golden handle. Whether it's actual gold or not is another question, but golden at least. And then, just based on my initial glance at the model, I think we're going to probably add some more gold. Um, she's a leader, obviously, of the army. Not necessarily the leader, but a leader. And uh, so I think she deserves to be a little, a little more gold. So, let's do this first, though. Just to confirm. And once we have that all set, I'll probably do the bat that's on her, near her waist. I'll do that in gold as well. And then I think the little symbols on her wrists I'm going to do. They look like, at least on one wrist, it's like a little stylized, fleur de -lis looking kind of thing. I'm sure those have another name besides fleur de -lis, but... That's what I think of when I see those. The French have corrupted me, I suppose. Just make sure to get the sides of this here. Good to go there. Alright, so... Yeah, be, especially because most of that shoulder pad we just painted is hidden back there. We're definitely going to do this uh, the symbol on her waist here in gold. And I'll 
looks good. And then, like I said, this little uh, stylized thing on her wrist here. We'll do that in gold. And if it's on the other one, we'll do that in gold as well. It's not. She's got like a, a treble clef or a bass clef on it. No, a treble clef on here. <laughs> kind of weird. That's not actually what it is, obviously, but it's close. I'm going to do this down here in gold as well. Whatever this is hanging off this chain. The chain will be a different color, but I'll do the one hanging off this as well in gold. These beads themselves are probably going to be uh, kind of a bluish, pale bluish white color. It's a color I like for beads. I seem to tend to put that on all the beads that come up on my miniatures. Alright, and I think that should be enough gold for her. Just looking at it. it seems pretty balanced. Got gold in every direction, which is good. There's no metal on the dragon itself, right? No, no other metal. So yeah, this will work. We'll uh, we'll let this dry, and then come back and figure out the, what the next step will be. Alrighty, so our gold is all nice and dry. And while it was drying, I just went and touched up the skin a little bit with some pallid witch flesh, uh, because I decided I am going to use a contrast paint on the skin after several times I said that I wasn't. Now I am so. But then I'm going to go in with Pallid Witch Flush and paint these beads that I was talking about. So I'll do these up here first. Just fix a errant bristle in my brush there. And we'll get the other side here. There we go. And then we will just very carefully paint in the beads in here. This is what uh, impresses me about the these new brushes is um, the old brushes, I'm pretty bad about taking care of my brushes, I'll be the first to admit it. Um, and the old brushes would lose their tip for me pretty quickly. <laughs> Especially after you saw, like in the beginning, I was wet blending the brown and the black together and I was like swishing and stuff. And normally that can be pretty rough on a brush and it can lose its tip. But here I just did probably what's the smallest detail on the miniature in these beads with no problem after doing all that with the brush. So I'm pretty impressed with it so far. Obviously, uh, I'm only painted with it for a day, uh, about nine hours at this point. So they could fall apart and be terrible in a week and then they're not worth the money at all. But so far anyway, they seem to be working great. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're just gonna go straight into the next color here. That's gonna be Golem and Flush. We're gonna use this on the skin. I think this is going to end up being too colorful for um, for a vampire, and we're, so we're going to tone this back down later, but for now, I think it'll be okay. Let's just make sure that I get it on all the skin that's back here. Back in there. And right up to the hairline, there we go. And then on this hand as well. I really should have done this before the uh, before the beads, but that's okay. We'll just be careful, and it'll be all good. I'm also noticing she has some rings on that I didn't notice earlier, so we'll uh, we'll do those in. I don't think we'll do them in gold. Actually, I might do them in the same color that we do her sword blade in. We'll have to see about that. So there we go, there's her hand all done. The camera's kind of not focusing on her tiny little hand there, but I think you guys get the idea. Alright, so there's her skin painted in, and it might end up being pale enough. We'll see. 
Um, and again, I'm just going to go straight into the next color, which is going to be Iron Warriors. And that's going to be on her sword, as well as I think I'm going to do the rings in this color. And I might then paint the gems on the rings in, in a different color later. We'll see. Um, a tip when painting swords, or really anything long like this, and skinny, is you want to move your brush uh, in the direction of the item, so not swishing across the brush like this, moving down, not <laughs> the brush, no. swishing down the sword, not across the sword. That way the, if you have any brush strokes in your paint, they're going with the grain of the sword, and they won't distract from the overall appeal of the weapon. So there you go. And then any spillover from paint the other side, just make sure to wipe that off. And there we have a nice, clean sword there. So then we're going to come in here and do these rings. So we'll do this one first. These don't have to be perfect. Um, if you're new to the channel, uh, I pretty much attempt to get everything to battle ready. If something happens to leak over into parade ready, that's fine. But I'm always going for battle ready. And if you're not new to the channel, I'm sure you're already well aware of this fact. So, we're just going to now, we're just going to take a look at her and evaluate what needs to be done next. Um, nothing is primer anymore. Um, obviously, besides the base, we'll get to the base. But besides the base, nothing is primer anymore. So now, it just sort of comes down to finishing touches and what we want to do with things. So the first thing I know we want to do is all these little claws that are on her armor. We want to do those in bone. However, we're going to do some more bone down here on her um, claws on her bottom half here. And so we'll do all that together. But this is sort of like a domino effect thing. One thing goes to another, to another, to another. So because we're going to do those claws, we want to do the terrain first so that we can just kind of slather it on there and if we hit a claw it doesn't matter we'll paint over it but if we're going to do that then we need to put the texture paint on the brush or on the base first so all that to say because we want to paint some details up here we need to put the texture paint on the base so for that we're going to use some armageddon dust and we're going to use our Hobby spatula. Right here. Woo! Well, hobby spatula. And amusingly, I knocked her over and she came off the base, which actually is surprisingly useful right now. I cannot say I did that on purpose. Uh, I'll happily take credit for it. But now we can just apply this and not have to risk getting it on any of the model. We just avoid the silhouettes. We're going to glue it back and we're all set. So, here we go. Sometimes, as Bob Ross said, happy accidents. So I'm just going to put this on. Uh, fairly thick, but it doesn't have to be incredibly thick. And I'm just going to avoid the silhouettes here of where our terrain will glue back down. And I was going to talk about how you have options when you're doing bases about how you can do the base or put the texture paint on before you glue the model on so you don't have to risk getting the model uh, dirty with the texture paint. And then I was going to talk about how, well, for this miniature, most of what we painted is nowhere near the base, just the tail. So it should be easy to avoid. But since I accidentally knocked her over and she came off the base, I don't need to talk about any of that. So now I don't really know what I'm going to talk about, to be honest. So instead, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll carry on doing this. I'll let it dry, of course. Uh, this will have to dry for quite a while. And then we will come back and continue painting once she's re-glued to her base. All right, and we're back. I've put the, uh, put the texture paint down, and I stuck a couple pieces of cork in there just for a bit of crumbling wall. Um, then I glued her back to her base, so she's all ready to go. So we're gonna move on to the next step now, which is gonna be to just take some pallid witch flesh 
And we're just going to stipple that around the base. Um, for that, I'm going to use not the GW brush, just, just a random Walmart brush. Um, and so this is to help this take the contrast paint a little better. And while I'm here, I'm just going to cover up these little bits of black base that are still hanging about. So I'm just going to cover this. I don't have to cover it evenly at all. I can cover like that is perfectly fine. We just want it to be closer to a color that will accept our contrast paint. Just need to be careful around the wing here. And the reason I didn't do this before gluing the model back on is so that I could cover over these little bits of base that didn't get texture paint on them and know that they're going to be covered evenly. So we'll just keep doing this all over the base, making sure that in all the areas we at least get some of this white down. And then once that's dry, we'll come back and start filling in some colors. All right, so we got all our Pallid Witch Flesh laid down. Now we're going to take our main base color, which is going to be Snakebite Leather. Oh, that's aggro stains. There we go, Snakebite Leather. And we're also going to have Gore Grunter Fur handy. We're going to start with Snakebite Leather. And we're just going to cover the entire base and the structure of this cathedral looking thing with this color. So there's, there's a bunch of little details hanging around here, but uh, we'll come back and paint those afterward, not a problem. But for now, it's just easier to just get everything based out in the same color. And then the Gorgon to Fur, we're going to come in and just put in around the base just to mix up the ground color a little bit. So we might put it in some of the recesses or just maybe around on the ground. Just in different places, just so that our ground isn't just completely brown. Or this shade of brown, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up with the snake bite, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the Gorgranta fur. Alright, so we've got all our snake bite leather laid down. It's still wet, but we're now going to take some Gore Grunta fur, and we're just going to put that just on the on the dirt part here, not on the walls. I'm just going to put that around in some places, just to mix up the color of the ground a little bit. Just kind of sprinkle it in wherever it looks okay. Make sure to get some in the middle here, and maybe here, and over here, and then I'm just going to feather out the edges of these patches just so they kind of, there aren't any hard to find lines, they're just kind of fading in and out of this color. There we go, that's all set. Now we will wait for this to dry completely, and then we will come back and dry brush our walls. Alright, so we've got our contrast paint all dried there. Now we're going to pull out the Rakarth Flesh and our dry brush here. And then we're going to throw the dry brush on the ground. How about that? That's better. <laughs> now we're going to dry brush this and really over brush it more than dry brush it onto the building part of this base. And I'm going to get these chunks that have that I've put down here that have sort of fallen off as well. So I'm just going to go like this, trying to retain some of that color underneath still. But making sure that we get a good amount of this paint on here. We're going to get right up to the edge of our, our beast here. And get these 
these chunks. Get a little bit more paint here. Make sure we're not missing any facets of this building. So I will finish this up and get all this dry brushing and overbrushing done. And then I'll come back and we'll do the next step. Alright, we're back after the dry brushing on our building there. Got that all set. Now we're going to take some Mornfang Brown. And we're just going to pick out the uh, all the little tree branches or vines or whatever that are growing on this building. We're kind of going for a... keeping everything in the brown tone for this uh, for this base. And the tufts we're going to use are going to stay in that, that same family of color as well. And I think it'll work well with the the colors we have on the model, which is always good. So, like I said, just picking out all these branches with this Mornfang Brown. And then we'll come back and we'll be ready to go back to working on Laura instead of the base. Because the next step will be painting in the nails that we wanted to do about six steps ago before our line of dominoes said we had to do some other stuff. So, I'll finish painting these trees. And we'll come back ready to paint the nails. All right, we got all our vines or tree branches, whatever, painted. Now we're going to go on to Screaming Skull, and we're going to do all the nails. We're also going to grab the couple skulls that are on the base of this, uh, this model as well. So let's see. I know there were some skulls. Let's see if I can find one. Here's one. And there's one here. And there's one hanging out up here. Looks like the tree grew through it and brought it with it. We'll touch that branch up in a second. But just looking for any other skulls, I don't see any. Alright, so let's go on to nails. So we're just going to pick these out very carefully, since everything else is already painted. Probably require a good amount of spinning of the model here to make sure we get them all. But I'm just going to go foot by foot here. And then up to, uh, up to all the decoration on her armor. And I think we'll do a couple little details on her rings, and then it might be time for the wash. We'll have to see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these first, and then we'll see where we're at. Scram those. up here as well. And she has her fangs sticking out here, so just touch those ever so gently with this paint. side of this one. Alright, I think we're all set. We got those, we got those, we got the beast's feet. Yep, I think we're all good and we got the skulls. So, excellent. So I'll let this all dry and consider what else we need to do to her. 
And if not, the next step is we'll come back and do the wash. All right, so we're back. Got that all dried, and I realized the step I didn't do is these belts on her back here. Maybe she might have a couple on the front. We're just going to do these in Gorthor Brown, and then we're going to do the clasps for these belts in Grey Knight Steel. So, just get these painted here. I think this one at least wraps around to the front, but I think there may also be a couple up near her chest that will paint as well. But we'll just have to see. So, yep, there is one across her chest up here. Just get in there. I think that's another one there. Another one there. That'll work. So that's all set, then we're going to grab Grey Knight Steel, Ooh, with some Gorthor Brown on it apparently. I guess my Gorthor Brown's leaking a little bit. There we go, Grey Knight Steel. And uh, we're just going to just touch the, the edges of these clasps right here. Well, put it in there. That'll work. So then, I believe we're ready for the wash. So I will make sure everything is nice and dry, and then we'll come back and do the wash. All right, so we got everything all dried, and I did one of the belts right there along her waist that I forgot first time. So now we're going to take Nuln Oil here, and we're going to take our big old brush, and we're going to apply this. I'm going to start with just applying it to the building here and to her upper half, and then we might apply it to her lower half, um, possibly just in some recesses of the lower half, maybe not the whole thing. We'll have to see. But definitely we're going to do this whole building here, and that's really going to tie the dry brushing and the undercoating together as well as really differentiate it from the from the ground here so just make sure it's going on nice and even we don't want it pooling anywhere um, if it does start to pool we can pull it off it's not a problem but again may as well save ourselves some trouble and just not make sure it doesn't pool in the first place just got to work our way around here. And I'm going to put it on these little chunks that I scattered around the base as well. Just in there. Alright, and on this front wall here. And we got to make sure to get the back of the front wall as well. Just get all these pieces. So then it just becomes spinning the model around, grabbing out any big chunks of wash that are sitting anywhere. We don't want that. We want it to be nice and in the recesses, but not completely just filling the recess, if that makes sense. So we're going to grab that out there and I'm just using the same brush we used I just wiped it off so it's mostly devoid of paint and then we're just tapping making sure that comes off all right so now we'll do her top half here and we want to be careful when we're doing this top half that we don't get splatters that form and go down on her 
bottom half here. Although now that I look at that, I accidentally hit that arm there. I am going to do it on this part as well. Just very gently. Just a very light coat of this all down her bottom half here. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the uh, with the building. We'll put it on heavy and we'll just pull it back off afterwards if it's pooling too much. Like so on her face right now, there's way too much on there. But rather than try to finesse that perfectly right now, we're just going to put some everywhere else and we'll come back and fix it. Not a problem. And if, like for instance, if you leave it to dry for too long and you can't pull it back off, um, I would just repaint over that area and try again. Not a big deal, especially on small details. It'll be just fine. And this is going to make the model look a little wonky for right now because it's so shiny. Um, but once it all dries, we should be A-OK. -okay. So I'm just going to get this on the inside of these wings here as well. Although I'm going to make sure I get it all up on her first. So I really want to really make sure I get it in all the recesses here. And get that on in one smooth application because tide marks are a thing that means where the paint starts to dry and then you mess with it and it tears the surface of the paint and causes what looks like a tide mark we don't want that so all right so then we just have this right here there we go all right so i think we've got it applied everywhere we want it now, we're going to wipe off most of that off our brush, and we're just going to gently tap around, making sure there's not too much in any one spot. These recesses maybe are a little dark. Not too much, though. We can also check the building again, so we'll just tap in here where there's a little too much. We did that, good. Good, good, good. Alright, so then what I like to do with washes is I like to blow dry them because I can know immediately if I need to do more wash somewhere or if there's some pooling I can quickly grab it with a brush while I'm blow drying it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll come back when she's all dry. Alright, and we're back and the null oil is all dried up and I think she's looking pretty good she's got her the null oil sits on this purple and gives it a nice it keeps the sheen but makes it so it's not just a pile of glitter it actually looks like armor at least in my opinion um, so now we're gonna go on to one quick little step which is just going to be some Blood Angels Red, and we're just going to put a tiny, tiny bit of this in her eyes. And then, we're going to go on to Tufts. So first, I'm just going to do this tiny little bit of red in here. Just like that. Let me get it off the edge here where I got it on the armor. There we go. So now she's got some red eyes I think is a good choice for a vampire all right now we're gonna go on to tufts so like I said um, no not like I said I haven't talked about these yet at all um, these are all from the dry step set from gamers grass this is not sponsored I wish they would sponsor me but no not sponsored uh, and so we're gonna use all these to kind of make a, a varied effect on here so I'm just going to grab each one of these with some tweezers, get some super glue on the bottom of them, and then it's just down to pick a spot and lay them down. So I'll just go in there. And I think I'll use, I'll use two of each on here and see what that looks like. And uh, if we need to use more, we can. So I'm going to try to lay them down both up against the building and out in the main areas here. Um, grass likes to grow in like 
Our weeds like to grow in little nooks and crannies and stuff, so growing right up against the ruin would make sense. And these tufts are uh, kind of odd shaped, as you can see. They're not all just circles, so that'll help give it a, a varied look. Let's see, how about right here? Let's just finesse them in if you need to. They're just on little sticky pads, so they can bend and you can mold them to however you need them to be. Let me get the next color. And yeah, we'll stick that one right here. Then I'm going to stick this next one inside the building inside the silhouette of the building anyway. Maybe right up against that wall there. That'll do. And then we've got this one. Which I'll put probably here. Looks good. And just make sure it's nice and stuck down. And then one more of that type. Let's see where we're going to put it. I'll put this one... Hmm. Maybe right in here. Yeah, I think that'll work. Push it down in there. Yeah. Then I think I'm going to do one more of these dark ones. And I think that'll be it, to be honest. You don't. You can use a lot of tufts on things and not a lot of tufts on things. You just kind of, once you see that you kind of have the balance going, then that's all you really need to do. So I think that looks good. It's got a varied, varied colors to them. So now the only thing left to do is to paint the base frame. And we'll just go right into that. No reason to put a cut in here. Just pop open our Black Templar. Pop the model off of the paint stand, obviously. The model's completely dry, so we can touch the model itself. And we'll have to do two coats of this, but I'll just show you one here on camera, and I'll do the next one off camera. And then, of course, you'll see uh, see the after shots. But, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this one. I very much appreciate everybody taking the time to watch, whether you watched five minutes or the whole thing. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. This obviously is not meant to, I mean, you're welcome to copy this paint scheme exactly if you want, but that's not really the point of, at least in my opinion, it's not really the point of painting tutorials. Um, it's more just to walk you through how someone else explores painting a miniature. Whether you use the same colors or not, it's still helpful, I think. you can see what they what they pick out as a different color see what they think certain parts should be and how they relate to other parts and so on and so forth so even if you don't use any of these colors i think these tutorials are still quite helpful uh, if you agree or disagree please let me know in the comments i'm always happy to accept feedback but yeah that'll do it for Miss Laura, Laukavai, Mother of Nightmares here. Obviously, the base room needs another coat. I'll do that once it dries, but I won't make you guys sit through that. So that'll be that. We'll just spin her around here, see the building, her wings, and then, of course, her the business end of her, as it were. The end that's coming to get you. So, like I said, thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.